Hi, this is Dr. Gina Michael Petrie, and this is a brief introduction to ESLG 489, Cultural and Linguistic Diversity in the Classroom. And I'm hoping that this is one of the most influential courses that you ever take, not only for your teaching career, but rather every time you interact with anyone who is in any way different from you. Um, I'm hoping that it begins, if, if this hasn't already happened for you, it begins to help you understand how big the world really is. Sometimes the internet, social media makes us kind of believe that our world is pretty small, but really there's a lot of diversity there that we often just don't see. For those of you who've had lots of experiences with other cultures, other languages already, I'm hoping that not only does it add to your understanding, but it also gives you some concepts, some vocabulary to express some of that understanding as well. So um, this course, the way that I have designed it, the way that I think our conversation needs to move as we all begin to understand better um, cultural and linguistic diversity, what those differences can be, what those approaches have been to them, um, how different cultures work, and uh, how to apply our understanding. Uh, I believe that the best way for us to move through it is to begin by building up some frameworks together, some kind of shared understandings, and from there to explore some concepts together in, in a group kind of way, and then for us to actually apply it as individuals. So let me talk through the way the course is set up um, in this way. So to set up a framework for you, the first thing we're going to do is in unit one, we're going to take a look at one, the response to one group, one uh, cultural and linguistic uh, group in the past, specifically German Americans. And what we're going to do is kind of explore what were the ways that, that people in this group were responded to, how did schools respond, communities respond, what were the laws like, and, um, and to actually learn by looking at the past, learn a little bit about what might be going on now with current groups that we have that are culturally and linguistically diverse from U.S. mainstream culture. So the first place we're going to build our framework is to go back in time and to learn through um, some historical responses. We'll build up some concepts together that have to do with um, uh, how people respond, how they think about linguistic or cultural diversity, whether or not they think it's um, the responsibility of, of uh, the minority group to change what they do or whether they see it's the responsibility of the majority group to learn about um, others. So we'll take a look at a lot of those different concepts, a lot of those different options. And again, the idea is to think about now and to think about what's going on now with the groups who are here now and do we see any echoes of history? I think, I think you will see that we do. So um, another framework that we're going to build up, this is really key is for you to have a really good understanding about what culture needs. And I think all of us, you know, at different times, we've had to write a definition of culture. I remember uh, us talking about it in fifth grade social studies. It comes up from time to time. And um, we're going to look at it in a slightly different way probably than you, than you have in the past. So we're going to explore uh, what makes one culture different from another? What are some of those implications? And then maybe the most important concept you get from this course, we're gonna talk about something called cultural humility. How do I, as a TESOL professional, how do you, as a TESOL professional, how do you approach and address and respond to cultural and linguistic difference? Um, it's really a key element in the TESOL profession. And so my goal is that you'll have full understanding at the end of Unit 2, and you'll be ready to um, join the TESOL profession in terms of responding to cultural and linguistic difference. So where do we go after that? Um, we go into four units, uh, one right after the other, in which you will explore some concepts connected with some different groups. 
So if you look ahead, if you look at our Canvas unit, what you'll see is that one of the units is about Central America, specifically El Salvador. One of the units is about Ukraine. One of the units is about Iraq, and another is about uh, Myanmar, or Burma, as it was uh, formally called. And it, m you might be tempted to think we're going to study Burma, or we're going to study Iraq, or we're going to study the culture of Ukraine. Um, not really. What we're going to do is we're going to explore some of the experiences that people have who are from that culture, um, that is part of their home culture, or that they have taught students from that culture and they've really come to a deep understanding, I think as deep as a teacher can get, in terms of how, that, how people um, who subscribe to that culture, how they experience life and what they're, how they, um, what their values are and how they move through decision making, that kind of thing. So what one thing we'll look at in Unit 2, going back to that framework, is as I mentioned, we'll, we'll learn about cultural humility. And cultural humility, one of the, the basic tenets is that you understand that everyone opts in or opts out of different parts of their culture. And so we, we're not going to study the culture of Ukraine because there is no culture of Ukraine. But what we are going to do is to look at some experience of people who've grown up in Ukrainian culture and how they've been impacted by that. And so that's why I call this exploration of concepts. As people are telling their stories, you'll be listening to interviews. So it, it'll this course in some ways will be like having a lot of wonderful guest speakers who are sharing with us their firsthand experiences of either growing up in a culture or uh, teaching students from that culture. And, um, and so as you're listening to those, those pieces, you'll begin to notice that people opt in, they opt out, they make sense of things in very different ways. Um, and so that's, that's what we'll be looking at with those, those four units that are part of exploration of concepts. And as people are telling their stories, um, for example, uh, in one person who's talking about their story, it brings up immigration issues. And so we'll have a guest speaker that you'll listen to uh, who will talk to us about what are the immigration issues that TESOL professionals should really understand so that they're informed and they can, they can better understand and they can better assist their students. So I'm really hoping that you really enjoy those four units while we're learning a lot about how the world works and the different concepts that you will encounter as a, as a TESOL teacher. Now, while we're doing those four units, what I will be doing, I hope for you, is modeling cultural humility myself as you hear me carrying out these interviews um, about, with people from Ukraine, people who are originally from Myanmar, for example. And then, as you might guess, what's coming is you apply it. And so in the very last unit, and the last unit is longer than the other units, it's about two and a half or three weeks, in the very last unit, what you're going to do is to identify someone whose culture, whose language background differs in some way from mainstream U.S. culture. And you'll identify them, you'll create interview questions, and you will carry out an interview that you will either videotape or audio tape. Um, I think that in this course, all the interviews that I'll carry out, they'll all be audio taped rather than videotaped, but you can choose. So you'll carry out the interview, and then you'll post it so that the rest of us can hear that interview as well or watch that interview as well. Most importantly, after that, you will listen or watch the interview again and think about what are the cultural implications? What are the implications for a teacher? What should a teacher who has a student like this, what would it be better if they understood that you can get from that interview? You'll post that, you'll share it with the rest of us, and we will each, in that last unit, it'll be a very rich learning environment because we'll all be learning from each other. So if there are, say, 25 students in the class, 
you only carry out one interview, but you get the benefit of hearing another 24 and reading what your 24 classmates um, believe those implications are. And one thing that I hear again and again when I'm out talking, especially with K through 12 teachers who have English language learners in their classroom, one thing I hear again and again is that teachers wish they had a sense of how cultures can vary. They wish they had a sense of how assumptions that students and parents and community members and other teachers, how they may differ from their own and how to gather that information. They're not even sure how to do that. In our last unit, you'll have an opportunity to do that. You will kind of step up to a place where whichever school, whichever program, whichever building you end up in the future, you'll be able to um, not be an expert, you, but you will be someone who others can turn to as a resource for how to get started in learning about the, the very different cultures and languages of our future students. I hope you enjoy the course. Welcome to Cultural and Linguistic Diversity.